Greetings to all, this is the unboxing vid and the bill vid for the Camov KA26 NATO code name Hoodlum. In 1965 the Camov OKB showed off a prototype of the KA26 uh, NATO code name Hoodlum A which was built for civil service, particularly agricultural applications. It was something of a direct descendant of the KA-15-18 uh, uh, utility helicopters, featuring a coaxial rotor system, quadricycle landing gear and twin tail fins. Although the tail assembly was fitted on a double boom, the KA-26 had fiberglass rotor blades and a twin uh, M14V uh, 26 nine cylinder air cooled radial engines, one in each pod, fitted on each side of the uh, fuselage and providing uh, 325 horsepower each. Piston engines were used to reduce the cost of maintenance and operate of manufacture and operation at some loss of performance. The KA26 was seen as underpowered. However, the KA26 still had three times the payload ca ca uh, capability of the KA15. The KA26 featured a modular configuration. It didn't have a fuselage as such, simply a cockpit with rear sliding doors on each side and an appropriate mission module that fitted up behind the cockpit between the two main gears as per the mission requirement. There was a module for six passengers <coughs> with uh, on two rows of bench seats convertible to cargo hauling, medical evacuation, that module featuring two stretchers plus seats for two sitting patients and a medical attendant, and crop spraying with wide uh, sprayer bars to each side. A flatbed could also be fitted, slung loads could be hauled uh, without a module. The Pk A26 uh, proved a flexible jack of all trades, being useful for utility and medical use, crop spraying, ice reconnaissance uh, for civil vessels, and so on. It was too light for serious military use. However, the K26 uh, was one of the few uh, modular flying machines to be successful, with a total of uh, 816 Hoodlum A's uh, built uh, before the end of production in 1997. The machine was exported in some numbers to Mongolia and a number of Warsaw Pact countries. With those it saw service in particular with Hungary and it's within um, Hungarian agriculture that it proved a very popular machine and uh, I've read articles um, where it's felt to be the optimum machine for uh, crop spraying the uh, grapevines ensuring because the the um, airflow created by the rotor blades actually means that the spray gets onto the underside of the leaves and it's regarded as a particularly effective platform for uh, dealing with bugs and other such creepy crawlies. Um, it is a very manoeuvrable machine and I would very strongly suggest guys go online and look at some videos of these things starting up. I very much feel this is... K26 is what happens when you leave a... Um, a light helicopter and a uh, Land Rover in a hangar overnight. Um, so, anyway, most of that was um, courtesy of airvectors.net and a few other sources that I've done a bit of background reading from, as well as my own opinions. So, now on to the unboxing vid, and that will then lead on to the actual uh, build vid as well. So, on with the boxing of the unboxing of the uh, A model Camov 26. Now, I've been waiting to do this kit for a while, uh, distracted by doing Pacific Theatre. So, let's take a look at what we get. So, traditionally, A model, top opening box, pretty thin. And we'll start off with the instructions. Now, this isn't. This is a not the latest kit by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, we'll look at the instructions. Fairly typical A model style. Sprue call out. Uh, everything in black and white. So if you if you can differentiate these shades, you're a better chap than me. Um, this is a case of fifty shades of grey, without the fun bits. Um, Though I would say it is uh, 50 shades of grey that we engage with in my personal pleasure room, being the man cave. So anyway, 
uh, <laughs> sprue call outs, guidelines to what the symbol means. This is done as a little instruction book. Uh, call out stating the parts necessary and then referencing to the uh, colours as well. Now the colours, they call out the humbrals which gives you a good starting point to um, then cross-reference using the various colour charts, colour tables and websites. And instructions like this, it's useful then to make a note of your own colours also. Particular things like the interior, do your research, find photos of the aircraft online, get some idea. Particularly, I found actually putting in the serial numbers that are marked for a specific model is a way of find of actually seeing what the manufacturer looked at for their own reference purposes. So it starts off with the, uh, the cockpit. Relatively straightforward assembly. You're gonna to have to add things like seat belts to this. Uh, you've got the main controls, the cyclic collective and the uh, pedals. Um, goes on there to the upper fuselage with the um, tail surfaces, bearing in mind these contra-rotating props. Then the uh, engine pods for the uh, two radial engines. I think one of really those sort of just give that helicopter its particular appealing uh, look. Then it goes on to putting on the undercarriage and I would honestly, that's something I would just leave till later. Uh, there's so much pokey out bits on this that you just don't want to put them on at this early stage. The rear fuselage of the main cabin is a sub-assembly in its own right. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm building this in uh, pretty much this version, but I think this is again, look up the version, the particular one you're uh, making to get the right interior colours. I think it gives you generic ones here, but I'm very pretty certain that depending upon the application, you're going to have a different interior. So that does need re researching and you'll have to annotate it yourself. You'll need to add seat belts as well to this. And I think a few other details just to dress it up a little bit more. The windows here are quite small on the sides, but you've got these massive rear windows. So you're going to see what's going on in there. Uh, so it's worth doing the extra work. And something not to forget about is the aft bulkhead to the cockpit itself. That There's going to be missing detail on that. So you're going to need to add things like fire extinguishers. Uh, maybe electrical junction boxes, various other bits and pieces, but that surface behind the cockpit. So there is something that's going to definitely need uh, dressing up a bit. Then on to the undercarriage. Um, not as complicated as it could be, not as bad as I've seen on some uh, camovs, but still pretty involved. Now the rotor head. Uh, now this is where Amor, they will supply these tiny spindly bits, individual pieces. And... Uh, location of these will... Uh, be entertaining at best. I think this is something you need to uh, gear yourself up for a nice long spell on it. Don't put the actual rotor blades on until you've built this entire central section and do it in the, in the uh, two halves. But you've got the one shaft going through both. So you're really going to need to do the two layers together. Uh, I think getting the two rotor blades to independently turn off each other is going to be tricky here because of the amount of adhesive you're going to use and everything else. I'm not saying it isn't doable, but I'm thinking it's not going to be easy to do. Um, I mean, they do show it here that they, that's how it's been approached. Um, so you build the top half, then the lower half. And then bring them together. So yeah, maybe more doable than I was giving it first credit for. Then coming together with the main elements. I think with a nice big uh, cockpit 
sliding doors, they are worth displaying open. At least one side is. That's what I tend to do. Then I think you get onto what for me is one of the highlights of this kit. You have well six painting options here. So you've got two for Russia. Actually three uh Russian ambulance. Uh East German police. Uh, East German, the Interflug, and then a one in Hungary. And I'm very tempted to do the Hungarian one. I've seen footage of these in Hungary uh, being used for agricultural purposes. Um, and that with the yellow, and I just like, I like that scheme. Um, that's not saying that doing the East German one isn't tempting as well. But I just haven't done any a big yellow bird in a while. In this case, a, diddy, a dinky yellow bird in a while. Uh, so, very tempted to do this one. Also, I haven't got anything Hungarian. No, I, I tell you, I think I've got one Hungarian light aircraft on my shelves. But all the Eastern European countries, Hungary, Bul uh, Bulgaria and Romania, have been rather unrepresented. And I, I do would like to build some aircraft uh, dedicated... Uh, to those countries, or at least in the markings of those countries. Poland, the Czech Republic, and uh, Slovakia uh, have been well represented, I say particularly Poland and the Czech Republic. So, let's take a look at the parts now. A model, short run kits, limitations on tooling, means you get small sprues. And that's why they tend to break their parts down now you can see here there's a bit of color tainting I've seen this before on some of the a model kits um, might be mold issues there is a lot of quite fine flash you're going to need to clean up delicate sprue attachment points this shows sprue shows the undercarriage and some of the rotor bits the detail is pretty good in all fairness it's quite fine don't worry about the plastic purling that you disappears that disappears with paint seats are basic and they've got a sink mark that needs to be addressed um, the wheels two halves nothing to align align them so I would probably suggest putting a pin in for assembly purposes to make sure that you align them properly Fuse are large. It is diminutive and it has a lot of components for its sm small size. Flash on there that needs to be addressed. The usual fairly chunky plastic and these a lot of small details here as well. The cockpit, I think you do need to do your research to find out what needs to go on the inside faces. Might be stuff details to put on there. The engine pods, really my mind the highlight of the kits, but they've done a nice job of them. I think here it's a case of there's going to be filling and sanding, try not to destroy it's important to try not to lose the surface detail. The rear fuselage. Now I know this helicopter's been done in a number of versions. I've been trying to find um other kits of this and looking online all over the place i keep checking back i really hope a model re-release this kit because it's just one of those i will happily build a second and a third of the camof 26 because it's been done in so many versions used in so many versions a nice agricultural bird of this be fun and then the rotors again they have, being a contra-rotating helicopter, they tend not to be, the rotor blades tend not to be as long, individually as long, as uh, non-contra-rotating helicopters like Mills. 
so their rotus sag is going to be a little bit less again look at reference photos to get the rotus sag uh, right I look back over some other videos on how i do this with a boiling water to impart it i don't think it's going to be needing much detail isn't bad um, but something you don't rush with these at all the clear parts They're actually quite nice. Thick, yeah, certainly. Um, the doors painted as a single piece. The rear fuselage, that single door is painted as a single one. Now I think here, because it's so big, it's gonna show through. And I think this actually needs masking inside and out. Um, because you've just got the four windows that make up the rear, but the entire thing has been done in one clear piece. And I think if you look inside, you're going to see clear on the inside. Maybe put some thin plastic card on the inside. Look at the door detail. Because that's going to be quite visible, the dividing line. If you paint that, you're going to lose the interior detail. So that needs a little bit more work on it. Um, because the frame detail is very faint, um, masking is going to be a bit more challenging on this. It's going to be something you're going to struggle to get the delineation in uh, using the usual burnishing in the uh, masking tape with a cocktail stick. So I can see the clear parts presenting a bit of a challenge on this. The decals. Now, um, hmm. as always, uh, I think A model decals can be a bit of a mixed bag. They are crowded again. Not as bad as some I've seen, in all fairness to them. Uh, I've had some that have come have been really nice. I've had others that have disintegrated. The old ones can be an absolute pain in the backside, and they can have thick carrier film. And I think you risk seeing that more with the white lettering as well. Uh, I've seen some fairly awful carrier film on that, and that can really show up if you've got white lettering on a dark surface, and then the carry film uh can show up so that's why i'm probably going to go for the uh hungarian ones with a yellow with a green white and red stripes and the clear and the black uh markings what it does leave you with is some other rather nice usable uh masks that can be used for other aircraft simple instrument panel decal as well uh, medical version is nice, but I've got another one to do as a medic. Not not one of these, but a different development variation. I'm going to do as a medivac one. So I'm going to stick with a Hungarian bird. So decals are look fairly typical of a model. Um, reasonable, and I, you know, yeah, if they start disintegrating, something. Uh, I could find some other letters to make up the Hungarian decal if I have an issue there. And the uh, markings on the tail will be fairly easy to paint if those disintegrate. So that gives me a fallback position. If something like the Aeroflot decals disintegrate, you've got a bit more of a headache. And particularly if the white lettering comes apart, again, you've got more headache. So going down the Hungarian route, I've got a bit more of a fallback position. Uh, also, the black uh, will stand quite well on the yellow, and the uh, white, the yellow shouldn't show through badly through the white either. Um, we'll see. So, that's the unboxing of the A model. It's the kit's been around for a little bit. This was one of those very lucky finds from Chester Model Centre that I made occasionally. 
Um, I'm going to enjoy building it. There's a lot, an awful lot to like here. Um, and a lot of fun to be had with this. But it needs taking steadily. Not one to rush by any stretch of the imagination. Um, that image there slightly puzzles me that the guy's going through a floor hatch, but there's no indication of leaving the floor hatch accessible. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm definitely doing my research on this one and finding the Hungarian uh, reference photos to it. Now, I've been in two minds about this, and I think I was going to unbox these two at the same time. These are developments of the Camel. Uh, 25, the rather uh, the Camel 26, the rather short-lived 126, and its more successful uh, development, the Camel 226. I am actually going to unbox these separately. There's commonality between these three kits, but there's also some noticeable differences as well. So these three are going to form part of a series. Uh, but they are not going to be built as a triple build or a double build. They're going to be built as three single builds. So I hope you guys like contra-rotating propellers. So, it was a bit of a shock that I sort of realised. I dived into this kit, got on with it, and not done any update vids. So, well, somewhat belatedly, here we are. Um, fuselage on the KA26 is, well, mostly to get as its fuselage goes. You've got the main fuselage engine pods outside, you've got the um, rear compartment here, which uh, is designed to be swapped out with uh, chemical hoppers and other things, so the whole concept of this helicopter is that you, you know, take this off, put something else in that space and off you go on a, another job or even put a, dare I say, a flatbed area. Um, so you're also sort of left with the feeling that, well, with engine pods like this, even though they contain radials, you, if you, for a science fiction project, if you wanted to drill out the rear, you could have it as tilt jets. I mean, it is... For a helicopter that is now largely or moving out of service, and is certainly an old design, this still looks uh, rather science fiction-y in its own way. Um, the fit is as anticipated. Everything, everything on this kit needs work. Um, the main issue is... Um, particularly on butt joints, that the sprues overlap and you have to tidy up the mating faces and clean up a lot of fine flesh. Okay, it's an A-model kit. It's an old one. It's what you expect. Um, I'm bloody loving it, to be honest with you. Um, I've had to... F one engine uh, pod went on okay, the other one definitely has had issues, so I've had to put filler, uh, beads of filler in there. I've been using uh, Deluxe Products uh, Perfect Putty because I can thin it down um, to a level that I can paint it in. And then what I may well do once it's in there, uh, put a bead of super glue over it and the super glue acts on the fine putty material when it's dried to uh, almost the putty becomes like a filler for the super glue. There are some dedicated powders for it. I think the two together work quite well. Um, the heavily glazed canopy, as you can see, has had a fair bit of masking there. Decided to do in Hungarian Air Force markings, um, so I had to dig through through my decal stash. And um, I've got 
the Hungarian Air Force stars. I only need two of them. And um, I'll have these. Uh, I'll use the some of these uh, red framed or white framed red uh, numbers um, for the helicopter ID number, which goes on the sliding door panels. So inspired by the one that's at the Hungarian Air Force Museum but as I don't want to use up all my fives rather than uh, building 404 yeah I don't want to use up all my fours rather than building 404 or 505 as it is at the museum I'm going to build uh, 504 um, it's chugging along quite well a uh, gap here I'm not sure about putting shim strip in there it's been hard to find photos I actually look into that area um, it wouldn't surprise me if that's fairly pronounced in its own way anyway uh, mainly it's this top surface this side looks correct that side just needs the additional work on it uh, detail is a bit soft on the two tail booms there okay uh, cockpit need a little bit of dressing up and the way that console butts up tight against and actually forms part of the uh, the nose has proven a little bit of a challenge to get that right so may end up with a bit of a gap there that I don't particularly want that interaction I think I have, must admit I've struggled with the other issue has been that the uh, frame and glazing lines are very very faint to the point of being damn near invisible so it's very difficult to see what you need to mask um, but it's one of those things you look at your reference picks you look at your info and you work your way through it so having fun with this um, I like how it's go coming along it's what I would anticipate for the type of kit that it is to provide a rather fascinating and interesting little subject so <coughs> next update when we're a bit further along with the build start getting the um, colors down certainly get it undercoated soon um, to see where really the sanding is necessary had a nightmare with a glazing side glazing on this pot to the point I'm gonna have to cut absolutely fresh windows for it as you can see these have gone absolutely tits up luckily those are obscured by the um, engine pods but I still don't like the way that looks so I'm gonna to have to probably knock that out and do this again uh, find a better way of doing it than I currently have um, there are a number of options open might even do it do it with a thin film it's gonna leave a lip there um, yes yeah, these side windows have proved something of a challenge to be honest a real challenge as the glazing doesn't go anywhere near fitting them properly so, that's where we are, that's how things are looking, and we'll carry on from there. Alright, another update. Well, we're now at a phase of the assembly, taken to the point where I'm sort of ready to uh, get on with some painting. Um, the basic fuselage and engine pods is done. Um, yeah, a little bit miffed up, misaligned the rear compartment slightly, but that's well and truly stuck on there now. Uh, not too noticeable. Uh, it's going to get done up in layers. I'm going to have to hit some white uh, on the nose uh, because it's fundamentally quite light in coloured interior. So the glazing lines that's going to be hit with white first and then I will build it up in a few layers the rotor assembly is done well I'll say rotor assembly minus the rotor blades is done um, monumentally fiddly as you can see and is, as it is inevitably when you're doing a contra-rotating uh, prop design now some of the actuator rods were well not to put too fine a point on it absolutely unusable as they were in a kit they just broke when you tried to cut them off the sprue so i had to replace quite a few that particularly the long ones those there and there these are maybe a bit too heavy and thick um 
I've got it turning in alternative directions. It needed a lot of opening up for anything to fit on the central spindle that needed sanding down. So to be able to do this, yeah, was uh, tricky to say the least. Now I'm going to be honest with you, some of this now has come out a little bit over scale. Um, but it's there, it shows how busy it is, which is really what you want to communicate with this. Uh, and if there's some camel of aficionados out there saying that something's missing, well, fine, go ahead, tell me, I honestly don't mind. Um, uh, yeah, well, that's cool in my book. Uh, especially that if you've been no camel well enough to be able to say that. So here's the fuselage with rotor assembly. I'll keep the two separate, so taking to model shows and such like. Um... So, that's that element. The rotor blades have been cut off and cleaned up, and they needed cleaning up. Um, one problem that you have is, they mate with this face facing downwards. So they're meant to be like that. But as can be seen, their natural curve is in the wrong direction. I'm going to have to take the boiling water to these. I found that it's often not so bad with the short rotor blades. Um, but these are actually, their natural kit bend is entirely in the wrong direction. And looking at the reference picks, they do seem to have quite a bit of flex on them. Oh, that's got to be addressed. Um, and those of you who are familiar with my build vids, know the technique I use with boiling water. Uh, please check out uh, previous helicopter builds for that. Um, when I actually take you through the technique for doing so, I think I demonstrate it fairly clearly on the AW uh, Camov 34 or something like that. I actually seem to forget what I do, but I do demonstrate in previous videos. Look for my previous Camov video. And you'll see the method for uh, imparting a bow in uh, the rotor blade. So that's what I will be doing. I'm probably going to paint these by hand. But I'm going to have to do them in a number of layers. Uh, because they have a... Uh, the uh, leading edge is, um, I believe, a metallic tone. Whereas the, uh, the main part of the rotor blade is a darker tone so there yeah, and i think i'm probably going to paint these by hand but take it quite progressively we'll see how it goes my airbrush them um but they do need quite a bit of masking and work and still more sanding and clean up because you can feel still some of the uh attachment point marks on them so that's where we are once it's painted up we'll uh dive into the undercarriage assembly. Well, so here we are, back at the bench, having fun. Uh, most of the painting, I would say, is done. It's now just more detail work. Um, gone on reasonably well. I ended up using Tamiya paints. Needs starting up here and there, inevitably. But the seep through from the... Um, under the masking wasn't really an issue, that seemed to work quite well. A uh, couple of issues with how the paint settled in some areas, uh, particularly around the aft of the engine pods, but hmm, yeah. Um, so we're coming along. Had an issue though, when I took off the masking, I discovered that there were marks on the inside face of the canopy. Uh, as I'd secured it with the uh, canopy glue, um, I was able to pop it off, and so now I've been sort of polishing out the marks. And what I think had happened was it was actually the uh, to me extra thin. I'd managed to get some there. Um, not particularly happy about that. The uh, polishing out. Using trimmed piece from a nail polishing stick and the really fine polishing uh, um, pad. 
and then trying out a couple of different methods and approaches. Uh, I've got some Johnson's uh, Clear and I'm also using toothpaste as well. Uh, just working through this. It's not going to be perfect when it's done, but hoping that if you take it progressively, this shouldn't come out. It'll be better than what it was. Um, I think if this was an outside surface, it would be a lot easier. But as it's a concave, quite a complex concave surface, this is going to be a real sod. Hoping to get the worst of it out before I reattach the canopy, but I think what that means is might be one of those models that sort of sits a little bit further back on the display shelf. You know, hiding behind a few other things. Um, and the two marks I'm trying to cope with are there and there. So those are the two ones I need to try and polish out, but we'll see how it goes. So here we have it, the finished cam off KA26. And I realise I'm filming this when I haven't even posted the unboxing vid yet. Uh, yeah, what do I feel about this? Well, it was a fun build. Very much in the classic A model theme um if you've seen the unboxing vid you can see that this challenge with part definition and flash and all the rest of it but if you work through it you get something pretty interesting i decided not to do the agricultural version i found images of hungarian air force version i must admit i rather like that um not just because the color scheme was uh, simpler because i just like the looks of it the decals came from my own stash um the numbers were from uh, were meant for panzers um, that seemed to fit quite nicely there. The uh, star is from a MiG-15 and I know it's oversized. It should be about a third smaller than that and it's what I had. So I accept that is out, it is too big but it's Hungarian and it still doesn't look too bad but yeah it's too big for what it is the pop of the rotors uh as discussed fit i dealt there are fit, fit issues i dealt with the uh problems with the staining on the canopy that just lost a lot of polishing out and then um tidying that up still a small mark there but overall not too bad um weathering with tamiya weathering powders and some black wash but i didn't go particularly heavy with any of that just felt it didn't particularly need it um and you look at photos of the helicopter unless it's inactive as you mean left storing outside they don't look too bad um the one at the hungarian air force museum which i think has been restored to flying condition looks particularly nice and I won't deny that one was 505 this is 504 so it's sort of close um, and I wanted the look to the look to be operational um, I think it gets across this the rotors uh, well I'm glad they're turning in opposite they can turn in opposite directions uh honestly i think the worst part of an a model kit to me on on helicopters as much as i love them are these link rods um they often disintegrate when you cut them from the sprues and uh they're just these tiny short stubs and when you cut them off they're also left with the cut stub which is very difficult to clean up Honestly, I think sometimes it's better to almost buy evergreen strip and make fresh ones. Um, use the original one to get the length, but then cut them fresh. Cutting them from the sprue means the, the cleanup is a lot trickier. Likewise, this was undersized, the fitting for the rotor, and that needed opening out. Uh, anything on this needed a lot 
of work, opening out, trimming, fitting, and all the rest of it. They don't rotate quickly, but they do sort of rotate, which is quite nice. Um, I must admit, when you look at this on the desk, it sort of it does sort of look like it should be scuttling towards you, or you know, uh, needing a fly swatter to take it out of the sky. Uh, But for all that, and for all the headaches, especially with the glazing, and the, the glazing was serious headaches on this, I enjoyed it. And I'm glad I've got one. It definitely fills a gap in the collection. Um, and I think it's a fascinating little subject. A pair of radial engines <coughs> hauling this thing around the sky. Um, and I've seen image, video footages of these things uh, starting up and it's all great clouds of smoke and everything else and I must admit I absolutely love it and absolutely glorious sound on these things well worth looking up videos of the Camel 26 <coughs> especially in um, Hungarian uh, agricultural use uh, they seem to love the machine and they offer certain advantages I think it's a fascinating little machine um, and it looks quite quite cool in its own way <sighs> yeah really glad it's done and really enjoyed it as well uh, we'll see what's next we'll see what's next cheers